Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Megan Ashton. Welcome, Megan. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, Don. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. So we're going to talk all about breath work, which I love this topic. And I've done a couple of episodes about it, but it's so interesting to me how there's different, um, the people, they learn all different kinds. There's so many different kinds. So does it matter if you're doing it because you feel like you want to relax? I mean, are there different kinds of breath work that you would do if you need energy and, or if there's, cause I know box breathing and circle breathing are the only two that I've heard of. I even heard of one where you do one nostril. <laughs> uh, Nadi yeah. Sodana, alternate nostril breathing. Yeah, yeah. That's a common one in pranayama with yoga. So how do, how do you know what to do? How do you even know what to do? So I love that question. And it's actually like several cat questions, but so basically the, the problem with the word breath work is that it's so broad that it can be so confusing for people because it encompasses so many things. Yeah. But I always distinguish basically the type of breath work that I do is called conscious connected breath work. And the term breath work without a space between breath and work kind of originated from conscious connected breath work, but now it's encompassing everything, including functional breath work. And I know you had someone on your show that was speaking about functional breath work. So that's basically your everyday breathing, what's going to help you to breathe more efficiently, to have more energy, to increase your, uh, increase your stamina. And what we're doing with conscious connected breath work is the opposite of that. It's not how you're supposed to be breathing every day. You're modifying your breath in a purposeful way for the purpose of altering your state of consciousness and actually inducing a deep transformation. As for box breathing, so box breathing, anything you're going to do to fall asleep, if you have insomnia or anxiety, or you want to focus for a test, those are about activating the parasympathetic rest and digest branch of your nervous system. And with conscious connected breath work, we're actually purposefully activating the sympathetic nervous system branch. But what's really magical about this is that we're doing it on purpose. And it's, it's a really empowering and safe container to access the sympathetic state. And anytime we've had a stress or a trauma or an adverse experience, we're in that sympathetic state without our control and we lose our breath. And then these things get trapped into our body and into our psyche. So when we revisit that sympathetic state, then we can actually start to root through deeply buried tensions and traumas from our body, process them and actually release them. So I always have the analogy of, of say like box breathing or anything else that's purposely activating the parasympathetic, they are amazing tools to have for your everyday life. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like putting a rug over just a gaping hole of all of this other stuff that's been buried and hidden that's actually kind of fueling the anxiety and stress. Whereas with conscious connected breath work, we're taking that rug out, we're digging through the hole, we're removing all that debris, and then we're actually just creating like a beautiful, healthy foundation. So mm. we're actually really getting to the root of most of our stresses and traumas. A lot of like the time when we go into a stress state, it's less about what's actually happening and more about our ability to cope because of things that have happened to us in our lives. So we can actually start to work through those things with conscious connected breath work. Does that make so, sense? Yeah, it does. So I was thinking like, so say, um, we'll just say the trauma was a car accident and it's not just that your mind remembers the car accident. You're saying that even if you can kind of get it out of your mind, at least for the day or most of the time, your body mm -hmm. still has all yeah. of that recollection of it happening. And it's just holding on to it until you go and do some type of breath work to release it. Well, it doesn't have to be breath work, but breath work is similar as working with altered states of consciousness. So there's like a booming industry now of ketamine therapy, where therapists are giving ketamine or psilocybin in a therapeutic setting to get people into these altered states where they can start to work through these deeper things. So yes, what I'm saying is basically that the body always remembers even when the mind forgets. And so actually you might not even remember some of the traumas that are dictating your nervous system and keeping you in the high stress state all the time and actually really impacting your daily lives. And maybe you do remember them, but regardless, it's always in your body. Mm -hmm. And if you can go back and just allow your body to feel things fully and breathe into them, then it's a pathway to really work through these things. And sometimes like with breathers that come to my sessions, they don't even remember what it is that they're experiencing or processing. And they just feel these intense feelings without a story attached. And that's just as healing. Sometimes that's actually better because maybe the conscious mind isn't supposed to know. Maybe that's too much for the person to handle. And they can process okay. it without having to revisit the trauma. Other times they revisit the trauma 
but they're in this more higher, it's like from a higher perspective, basically, you're in this altered state, it's much more empowering. And they can almost change the story around it to something that's more empowering. So that way they can move through life without having it be something that's haunting them as a victim, they kind of regain their power as a survivor, basically. Yeah. Did you ever read that book, The Body Keeps the Score? I did. And I don't even remember that much about it, but I read it about seven years ago. And that's basically exactly what's happening with, with breathwork is that it's allowing the body that's keeping the score to start to process these things, whether we even consciously know that it's doing it or not. Yeah. I have not read it, but I've had people mention it to me and they say it's really in depth. And so I think it might just go, woo. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I'd be able to really absorb what all it's saying, but on your website, I have to write where I or see where I wrote it, but it was something about how you're changing the state of consciousness similar to plant medicine. So mm -hmm. you are talking and walking people through this breath work and it gives them like euphoria, like, or is it, what is it? <laughs> I'm not going to keep so, guessing. <laughs> yeah, no. So uh, basically if you think about taking plant medicine or anything kind of psychedelic, it can lead to the whole realm of emotions. You might have absolute bliss. You might feel like you've had meetings just with the divine. You might need to see loved ones. You might feel absolute just horror. Like you, the whole realm is possible. But what I love with breath work is that it's always guided by your inner wisdom and it gives you exactly what you need and you don't get stuck in it. So I always teach my participants how to control the depth of it because it's all about visiting your tender edge to work through things, but not having an overwhelm. So for instance, I had partaken in a week long ayahuasca ceremony in the plumbing jungle before I discovered breath work. And every time I got stuck in hell and I was there for like 18 hours. And at the end of it, I was exhausted and I got so sick for the next year and it didn't give me any of the emotional breakthroughs I was looking for. And then with breath work within my first 15 minutes, I was in a similar altered state, but I was processing these really deeply suppressed emotions I had not allowed myself to feel since basically infancy and it was so much more empowering because I knew I could come out of it and it wasn't it wasn't too much because my inner wisdom knew exactly how much to give me so I found that it was actually far more healing and transformative than plant medicine and I've had a lot of my participants who have experimented plant medicine or even just self-medicated with psilocybin have come and said wow that was you know much more insightful and profound than my experiences with plant medicine. I think there is a time and place for it and I'm not trashing it at all. I think it's an amazing thing to be able to mm -hmm. use plant medicine with the right shaman or the right space holder when you're properly prepared and all of these other things. But with breathwork, it always meets you where you're at and takes you where you need to go. So it basically, it just gives you like the exact dose that you need because it's your own medicine again. So that's what I love about it. Yeah. Well, and you said before I hit record that that it is something that you need to be guided through. It's not something you can just do at home by yourself. Yeah, because it's basically because of resistance. So the ego thinks that it's keeping us safe by keeping everything the same. And so it kind of senses that you're on the precipice of something big when you start breathing this way and you're starting to enter these altered states and get access to these like subconsciously suppressed things from your body. So the ego gets really loud. In the first 10 or 15 minutes, I warn everybody that even as a facilitator, even my trainees and my training, people who know how life-changing this is, the ego still pipes up and is like, oh, this is like a lot of work. When do I get to eat dinner? I have so much stuff I could be doing right now. It's not going to work for me today, even if it's worked for you a thousand times. Oh, my lips are dry. Like all of these little irritations come up because ego wants to talk you out of it. So if you don't have a facilitator there to keep encouraging you to breathe and kind of hold you accountable to the breath, 98% of people will just either breathe really softly and return to kind of a normal breath. So then they're not going to get into an altered state because I use the analogy of the breath being the medicine. So if you're breathing softly and slowly, then you're not getting into that altered state because you're breathing normally. So most people will just not be able to reach those great depths and actually have the transformative experience when they do it on their own. And that's why we always recommend having a facilitator. Plus there are some contraindications you need to be aware of because you are working with altered states and you are working with the sympathetic nervous system branch. There's certain things that you shouldn't be doing breath work with. Okay. So what are the benefits of doing breath work? So it sounds like very far reaching to say this, but honestly, the benefits are everything physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, again, because you become your own healer. When you're in that altered state, you get access to all of your subconscious programming that may have been holding you back your entire entire life. You might have limiting beliefs, negative self-talk, old traumas, like so many different things, even 
physical injuries. People will come in and they're like, I can't, they, they couldn't cross their legs at the beginning of it because they're so stiff and haven't stretched in years. And by the end of the session, they're like, oh my God, I'm sitting cross-legged right now. Wow. Or people that have had like a crink in the neck forever. And it doesn't happen to everyone. It's just, if this is what's meant for you to happen, it will, but they'll come with like a crink in the neck. And then after the session, they can move their neck again. So it's like, it's all the levels, but emotionally it's just, so basically I've also had a lot of people tell me that one breathwork session was more insightful for them than ongoing talk therapy. So emotionally, it can be so good because with talk therapy, you're working with the conscious mind and that's like 2% of your brain power. 98% of your thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors are your subconscious. Mm -hmm. With breath work, we're working with the subconscious. So it's so good to have a therapist to bring you new awareness. But until you take that into the body and you take that into your subconscious mind, you're always just working with like a struggle of willpower and understanding things, but not feeling it and embodying it. Whereas with breath work, you can start to get these deep insights and they can actually take hold and you can actually embody it. You can actually release the deep, the deeply held trauma, release the limiting stories and really create lasting change. Yeah. How often can you do it then? Like, is it once a week or you do it once a month or what? How do you know? Are you ever done? <laughs> <laughs> it really varies. I usually recommend for people who are new to, to breath work to start out doing a weekly session or a bi-weekly session if that's all their schedule allows for and do about six or seven of those. And after that, you've shed so many layers and you've really had a chance to kind of reprogram your subconscious thoughts and to really create lasting change. But after that, then I say, you know, do a top up once a month because as long as we're alive, you always have more lessons and we're always gonna be given new challenges and new opportunities to grow. To grow. And so by doing like a monthly top up, that really helps to keep you and what's really cool about breathwork too is that after you've done a session, you almost get like a two week period where you just feel more in flow and more at peace and nice. less stressed out and like less triggered. And so it's nice to just kind of monthly top up to kind of keep that like then. Yeah. How long does it take like per session? Yeah. Great question. So if you just, if anyone watching this decides to do a breathwork session, I highly recommend you find someone who's going to offer a, a workshop that's at least 90 minutes long and includes 60 minutes of conscious connected breathwork, because it does take between 10 and for some people, even 20 minutes to reach the really deep altered states of consciousness. Your brainwaves will start to shift within five or so minutes, but to get into the deepest states, it takes 10 to 20 minutes. So there's some facilitators offering like maybe 30 minute sessions and it's like, you just got in there and right. now you're getting yanked out before any of the good stuff can happen. Yeah. So I like to give basically 60 minutes includes 50 minutes of reading this way. Mm -hmm. And then about 10 to 15 mm -hmm. minutes of coming back because you are in an altered state and you don't want to be rushed out of it. You want to be able to be breathing normally for 10 or 15 minutes to really start to integrate everything and to come back into your body slowly. Some really intense body sensations might be there that need to kind of dissipate so in order to get the most out of the experience, really look for someone who's going to offer an hour of the breathing as a journey. And then you need, I usually spend about 15 minutes in advance explaining everything so that my mm -hmm. breathers feel really safe and really empowered because big things can come up. There's some intense physical sensations that can come up. And I want people to know how to control the depth. I want them to know they are safe. I want them to know if these things happen, that it's normal. And so you want someone who's going to explain it really thoroughly so that you feel safe enough to surrender and let go and then allow what needs to happen to happen. And then you want time afterwards to, to journal and write things down because it's kind of like having a crazy dream. If you start mm -hmm. your day, it just goes. So you right. want to write it down while you're still kind of in a bit of an altered state before you forget it. And then it's really nice to do a group session or even a one-on-one -on -one where you have the chance to share about your experience afterwards because mm -hmm. that's really an important part of the integration process. And so that's why most of my sessions are about two hours long in total, sometimes an hour and 45 minutes, depending on how long the shares go, because we always want it to be flexible. So we're not rushing people. Yeah. So are you saying like somebody may start crying or like what's oh, what? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're like, that's oh, my goodness. No, so like what ask my parents what I do for a living. They're like, she makes people cry. And I'm like, <laughs> well, it's a little bit deeper than that. But that's one that's of the most deep. common emotions. Because if we're all honest, how much have we all suppressed our tears over our lifetime? Sure, so sure. many times, men especially. And that's what's so beautiful about breath work. Because I've had men come and when you're in this altered state, your barriers are down and you can finally feel these things. And they've expressed afterwards, you know, that's the first time I've cried since I was a little boy. I haven't allowed myself to cry in my entire adult life. And I just cried. And after going through this journey together, they have the courage to sit up and tell a whole group of people this because they're just in this like beautiful reset state. And so, yes, crying is common, but I encourage all of the emotions without judgment. 
So I say, if there's fear, if there's anxiety, if there is anger or rage, whatever it is, it's all a part of the human experience. And you can't experience the highs without allowing yourself to feel the, the heavier emotions. So we encourage all of it. And often in a breath work, it's like a roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. So you might start out just feeling kind of giddy. Some people will laugh, other people yawn a lot, and that's a release of energy. And then you might feel anger and irritation and frustration. And then by the very end of it, usually when you're coming back, those last few songs is when you just feel bliss and you feel so peaceful. You start to feel just like this newfound sense of love and gratitude and new excitement, like to get life started again. A lot of people say this type of breath work is like being reborn. And it's just that's when all like, you know, so many just beautiful, blissful emotions usually flood you is near that ending. Yeah. And for some people, though, like some people who have been doing so much inner work to begin with and have come to me, they go right into that state of bliss and they just have euphoria the entire time. But I can usually tell someone has done so much work if they're going to be in that state, because usually you have to peel through a whole lot of layers through, breath, like, you know, several breathwork sessions before you can just get to pure bliss for an entire hour. Right. Yeah. Gosh, that sounds magical. <laughs> I mean, what a rewarding job to be able to see it's the transformation for people if they come in, you know, kind of, you know, and absolutely chip on their shoulder or whatever. And then after 10 sessions, they're just a completely different person. Oh, not, not even 10. Honestly, if someone even commits to three sessions, that's enough to be transformative. My first session changed my life. And that's why I'm so obsessed with breathwork is I had been on a 15 year healing quest around the world, trying everything, talk therapy. I became a clinical hypnotherapist. I became a holistic nutritionist. I did a yoga teacher training in India. I had done all of the ayahuasca. I had an energy healing. I tried everything. And that first session, I went home literally feeling like a brand new person the next day. I was so much more confident. It allowed an eating. I, had, I was struggling with bulimia for 15 years. Mm. And after that first session, it created a big shift where it didn't have such a strong hold on me. And then after about five or six sessions, it just didn't resonate anymore. And nothing had worked for 15 years. So, and yeah, so coming back to what you're saying, such a rewarding job. I still, seven years later, every single session is so magical for me and I couldn't imagine a better job than getting to hold space for this deep work and it's so amazing to watch people transform like that and have them reach out to me and tell me how it's impacted the relationships it's like saved their marriage they're now in a happier career and just yeah it's so cool also it's great because I'm not healing anyone I'm just giving people tools to heal themselves. And I love that element of empowerment, of empowering people. Right. Yeah. Because then it makes people feel like they're in charge of how it all goes yes. down. You're just the tour guide. <laughs> exactly. I'm just touring, holding space. And it teaches people that everything they need is within them. Everyone's always looking outside of themselves for someone else to heal them, for someone else to give them the answers. Mm -hmm. And it's like all of that wisdom and everything you need to heal is already within you. Well, and like you said, at the end of the group thing where people can kind of share their stories, then if yeah. they hear somebody express something that happened to them and it happened to them too, then they're like, oh God, that wasn't just me, you know, because exactly. that's the worst feeling ever is when you feel like it's just you that has something that's going on. Exactly. I think the sharing circles are such an important element. And that's what I tell everyone in the beginning to encourage them to speak. I say, you know, it's not mandatory. But if you do feel called to share, it's not only going to be good for your own integration, but it almost always has a message or something in it that's going to help someone else in the group and it's going to resonate with them. So it's actually a gift and an offering to share for others. Right. So what's your demographic? Like who's doing uh, this? <laughs> it really is the whole realm. I would say primarily is people between maybe their 20s and 60s. So that's still a pretty big demographic. Huge. But I've had like parents bring in their 12 year old children and some of them are like the biggest breathers I've seen. They just really go for it. And it's so cool to see them just yes. like face these deep and big emotions so fearlessly. And then I've had people, you know, in their 70s and 80s come. And so it's the whole realm. And what I love is like, you don't have to have any kind of belief system. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to meditate. You don't have to believe in anything higher than yourself. If you come and follow this breathing pattern, you'll have a profound experience. And actually like my favorite people to come to me are skeptics. Cause like, I just love to put them into the state and then they, they become believers. It's amazing. They're like, you know, I never believed in anything higher than myself, but now it's hard to deny. It's almost impossible to deny because of what just happened. Yeah. And that's so amazing. Yeah. I would not say that I'm a skeptic at all. I feel like I believe in all this stuff, but I feel like I get so much in my head that yes. it wouldn't happen for me because I wouldn't be able to get out of my head about it. That's what I feel like my block would be. 
So this is something that I love about breathwork. Okay, so I mentioned I had done the yoga teacher training. If I'm being fully honest, my least favorite part of it was the daily pranayama practices. For half an hour a day, we had to focus on our breath. And I was so in my head. And I was just like, I'm so bored. I'm sick of focusing on my breath. I'm not getting any meditative <laughs> benefits. Like, when is this going to be done? Look at how many lights are up there. Maybe I'll count those lights, you know, all of those things. But that's what I loved about breathwork is when I showed up, you know, I was like, I just showed up with an open mind, even though I knew like, you know, I don't like focusing on my breath. Like I can't ever get to these these deeper states, even like I never offered clinical hypnotherapy because I never, even though I believe in its power, I never had a profound shift from it. Apparently I was like resistant and I wasn't suggestible enough and I was too in my head. So with breath work, I just, I went for the breath and within 15 minutes, all of those thoughts were big in the first 15 minutes. It's not going to work. It's not going to, it's not going to work. But after 15 minutes, I was just so deep in it. And then that's what's so cool about breath work is that it actually like it overpowers that thinking brain. If you just continue with the technique, it creates so many physiological shifts and it changes the brain waves and it changes the amount of activity in your prefrontal cortex and all of these things just like force you into an altered state and out of your head. Wow. That's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people will say it's like you could, you know, practice meditation daily for several hours a day for like five years, 10 years, and you can get into that same state that would take 10, 10 years of practice within 15 minutes of just doing breath work. And that's what's so cool is it's such a deeply meditative state for without having to do years of practice to get to it. Yeah. So what if there's a, not a place close to you? Like, do you guys do zoom or what? You yeah. have virtual. That was like a, a gift of coronavirus actually is like people started to offer this online and then they realized, well, wait a minute, if the breath is the medicine and it's creating the physiological shifts, then we as facilitators don't need to be there in person. I personally love to offer supportive sure. touch when I can in person. I think mm -hmm. that's such a value add. However, because the person is their own healer and the breath is the medicine, it can be just as deep and profound online if you have a facilitator just there to guide you with their voice. And is that just one-to-one -one or are there like classes of people? Yeah, I just did a Unfortunately, we we're just talking today because just yesterday I offered a free group session online and it was like some people from around the world all joined in. And so, yeah, you can do groups or one on ones online. And there are various breathwork schools, including the training school that I work for, which is called Make Some Breathing Space. I'm a teacher there. They offer five free breathworks a week. Hmm. So if somebody wanted to get into teaching this, how long does it take to learn how? So it uh, the reputable trainings are 400 hours. You okay. can find a weekend training in California. Unfortunately, there's a lot of like little places that are just doing like these shotgun trainings. Mm -hmm. But as I've mentioned several times, we're working with the subconscious mind and we're right. working with people's traumas and there's contraindications. So one weekend of training does not equip you to hold space in a way that's not going to re-traumatize people. That's not going to potentially cause, make them worse off than before they came to you. And so, you know, there's a, a global, there's a school, there's a governing body called the Global Professional Breathwork Alliance, and they govern trainings. And so any training that is certified by them will be a good solid training. And usually it's about 400 hours structured over between six and 12 months, because a lot of holding space for breathwork is going through your own inner journey, because you can only really hold the space from the depth that you yourself has gone, have gone through. And so you need a lot of time to actually go through that inner journey in order to be a really, you know, solid and authentic space holder. Mm -hmm. And so for that, that full part of the training, you're usually doing at least one session a week yourself. Plus you have to do practicums and you have to learn about all these little, like just tiny little idiosyncrasies, sure. holding space, creating the playlist. Uh, supportive touch and getting, mm -hmm. you know, author authorization for it and just so many different things. So yeah, it is uh, an extensive thing to learn. Wow. I guess for you personally, after having an eating disorder, do things still trigger it or is it healed? Yeah, it just fully went away. Wow. So within a few months of that, after my first session, I signed up for the training right away. I was able to it within two weeks and I started doing weekly sessions and after a couple of months, it just didn't resonate anymore. It just like wow. the thought of it just kind of grossed me out. And like I had done like clinical hypnotherapy, it really works with the subconscious mind. And it's very powerful for a lot of people for quitting smoking and for all mm -hmm. these other things. So I had a high hope for it because it was right. an intensive training as well. And it just didn't even scratch the surface for me. Um, and, you know, like throughout those 15 years, I would manage to abstain for several months at a time. But then as soon as I was tired or emotional mm -hmm. or going through things, it would kind of creep back in. Right. And then since this training, since like a couple of months of breath work, it's just never even like crossed my mind. It just doesn't mm. resonate. It's amazing. That's crazy. That is really, yeah. I mean, amazing, amazing, crazy, but that's just the power of the mind. It's just unbelievable. Right. 
Yes. So that's why it's so hard to make change when you're just using like your conscious 2% willpower. Eventually, you know, you're going to, your 98% who's dictating everything is going to win. You can't fight that battle forever. Right. And so that's why, you know, people have such a hard time with addictions. Breathwork is really helpful for addictions because you're, you're starting to work with the root cause. Addiction is just a symptom of these root causes that you have not been dealt with and you probably are not even aware of. Mm-hmm. So is it expensive? It's not really, if you think about it, because if you think about, for instance, I know people who have done ketamine assisted therapy with a therapist and they're being charged like upwards of $1,400 a session and having to sign up for six sessions. Oh, wow. Whereas I offer weekly group sessions in person. I travel to wherever I happen to be living at the time, um, primarily in the greater Toronto area and Salina, Mexico, and they're $40 a session. Oh my god! Sometimes people will join one and just from that notice a dramatic shift. So it's incredibly, it's financially accessible compared to most other things. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned the the group that people have to be a part of to know that they're really certified and they know what they're doing. How would a lay person find somebody that's certified or qualified that's close to them? Is there a search, a way to search? They should, if they put in, you know, breathwork facilitator near me, then they'd probably on that person's website, the facilitator, they would probably feature that they were a part of the GPBA, which is the Global Professional Breathwork Alliance, or the International Breathwork Foundation, IBF. So if that if they don't have that featured on their site, they could reach out to the facilitator and be like, you know, I'm just wondering okay. if you're, the training you did was IBF or GBPA certified. And I like that and you said that's know. where you are right now. So you are able to just be a little traveler and go do these breathwork yeah. things all over the world if you wanted to. Yeah, it's amazing. I love offering it in different places. It's always, every group is so different because every single person brings their own energy. So then it turns into this like collective energy right. and different parts of the world. It's different and you get like different personalities and yeah. How cool is that? Well, tell people where they can <laughs> find you if they want to look you up or have you help them through this. Yeah. So my company is called Unity Breathwork and because I'm also, or I was before I became 100% breathwork all the time, a wellness writer, most of my information is on my website. That's where I poured my heart and soul okay. into it. I've made my website into like an educational resource, basically, where I've done so much research on breathwork and how it works and how it affects the subconscious mind, how it affects your nervous system, the benefits of it, how to get over resistance, all of it. It's, a, it's, a, it's all in there. Wow. Um, and, and on there, you'll see how to contact me. You can also just contact me at unitybreathwork at gmail.com or look me up on Instagram at unitybreathwork. If you are interested in doing a whole week of breathwork in a really beautiful place in Mexico near the beach, I offered twice yearly retreats. My next one is November 29th till December 6th. And if you are feeling some kind of calling to actually take this out into the world, I offer one of the GPBA certified breathwork trainings. And my next one starts in a couple of weeks, but then I'll have another one happening in December. So lots of oh, different that's... ways to connect. Oh, I'm also available for one-on-ones online or in person. So just reach out to me. Gosh, that's awesome. I'm so happy for you. Like that sounds like <laughs> such a cool, cool it's job. Amazing. I couldn't imagine. It's the best gift. Yeah. yeah like a I, feel good job. Oh yeah. Like no matter how shitty of a day I'm having, I go and I show up and by the end, it's like the most natural euphoric high you could possibly get. Getting to hold space for breathwork is literally the greatest gift. And it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And I'm so grateful. I'm so happy for you. Well, thank you <laughs> thank so you. much for taking the time Thanks, and Dawn. providing that beautiful backdrop. It's so pretty there. I just, <laughs> I love looking at it, but yeah, thank you so much for your time and I'll be in touch with you for sure. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Don. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.